All right, welcome back. If you saw the previous video, we basically went over how to create our very first mod and how to do simple file swaps. And now in this video, I'm going to be talking about editing sprites. We're talking about the SPD file format, which is kind of like a texture container thing. You'll see how it works. I'm just going to focus on how to replace this texture right here on the title screen. One way to do that is if we use another tool called Amicidia, you can get it from this GitHub link and download the zip file. One more thing I want to do first before we get too far ahead is, as you can see I have these two image files here, we'll say paint.net image for the type, but they're different formats, so I want to be able to tell those apart. If I go into my Windows settings and search extension, Show file extensions in File Explorer. That should show up. We need to change that setting so that now I can see which file is a PNG and which is a DDS. That's going to be useful later. In our base CPK, in the title folder, there is this title.spd file. And if I open that up in Amicidia, right click and export that texture, I'll save it as a bitmap. In other words, it's going to save as a PNG. I can go ahead and open that up in paint.net. The reason we need a program like paint.net installed is because we need transparency. Regular old MS Paint is not going to cut it. And we also need layers, so I can stick a layer underneath this so that I can kind of see what I'm doing while I'm editing. Once we make our changes we can save it, but before I export I'm going to merge the layers and delete our background layer so that it's transparent again. And now we can go back into Amicidia and right click the texture, choose bitmap, and then we can just choose our edited file. And you'll see that nothing really changed yet. If you click up here where it says the name of the file and then you go back down and click on that texture, you'll see that it has actually been replaced. And now make sure that you go up and choose save as so that you don't overwrite the original file and choose where you want to put this new one. So let's go into our P5R Essentials CPK folder and then inside our emulated CPK here which is named whatever create a folder this one will be named title we can paste our modded SPD inside okay I'll just make sure that the mod is enabled and then let's launch the application you should now see that the title screen looks a little bit different, it's got a new logo, and if for some reason you're not seeing your changes, make sure that you put it in the right spot. That is one way of replacing sprites, but it is not the most ideal way, and I'll explain. So, when you're working with SPD files, there is something called the SPD emulator that we can use. And with that, you can make a folder inside your mod that represents the SPD file and you can put only the edited sprites inside rather than the entire sprite sheet. And that's useful because what if multiple mods edit the same sprite sheet but not the same sprite? Well that allows them to kind of merge together rather than having to like manually stitch them together. And it also keeps the size of your mod really low because it's only including stuff that you edited, so that's a nice way to keep the bloat down and make it easy to distribute. No reason not to do it this way. But in order to make use of that feature, we need to create a new folder next to our P5R Essentials folder inside our mod and name it F Emulator. That stands for File Emulator. And inside that, we need an SPD folder. And just like with our emulated CPK folder, we need to recreate the path to the file that we're replacing. So you know how the SPD is inside this title folder? Well, in our F emulator SPD folder, we need to create a folder named title, and then we need to create a folder named exactly the same as the file we're replacing. So p5r title.spd. So now inside that, we can just drop our sprites, right? Well, when we open the SPD in Amicidia, like before, you'll see that there is a textures tab and there's also a sprites tab. And each sprite kind of has like its own data, like the X and Y coordinates and like the size, some other information about how it's positioned on the screen. And we need to use a separate tool in order to split these sprites up into individual files. So here's another thing that you can get from the description. 
this Persona Sprite Tools GitHub page. Rather than go to releases, since this doesn't have it, we can download where it says code right here and download as a zip and just extract that somewhere. Inside of that we have these Python files and of course we have to install whatever the latest version of Python is. At the time of this video that's 3.13 so I'll download it from the Python website and you do want to make sure you check this box here that says add Python to path that's important but the rest of these settings you can just leave default. So you can just spam click through that and then install, doesn't matter. Okay, so let's go back here. It also says that we need .NET 7.0 for SPR disassembly, but we're editing SPD, not SPR. Uh, P5R doesn't use SPR, so we don't have to worry about that right now. That's more for like P3 and P4, so. The only other thing we need is this image magic EXE right here. If you go here, you can click on Windows Binary Releases, and then it's this first link right here. So download that, install it, and then we're finally ready to split our sprites up. Let's go back into our Persona Sprite Tools folder, and all you have to do now is drag our edited SPD onto the SPD disassembler. And if you did those steps correctly, it's exporting all of these sprites into a little folder next to it called P5R Title. So if you hold Control and then scroll on the scroll wheel, it should zoom in so that you can actually see the thumbnails. We want to grab both of these files named SPR17. One of these is a TDS file and the other is SPD SPR. And that other file just basically contains all of this data right here. So just select both of them and copy. Now we can go back to that folder that we named after the SPD and we can just paste those in. In fact, we no longer need the original SPD file whatsoever, so just to demonstrate, I'm going to delete it. We don't really need the title folder or the model folder or... In fact, I can get rid of our entire P5R Essentials folder at this point because we're not really using anything in it right now. So now our mod has become nothing but this emulated title screen logo. So now that we've established how this works, in the next video I'll be explaining how to edit pack files, which are these archives that contain many other file types. And then we can move on to stuff like sounds and music, so great job if you made it this far, and I hope you're interested in continuing to learn. Be sure to keep watching the playlist if so, hope to see you there.